Hey, man. In Exodus 21, it talks about Hebrew servants and how they had a six-year contract and released on the seventh year. Right, Exodus 21 is a popular chapter many Bible critics like to hang out in because it surrounds the topic of slavery. I do have an entire playlist dedicated to this topic called Slavery in the Bible. Make sure you check it out. Okay. So, in this passage, verse 3 says, If the man comes in single, he shall go out single. If he comes in married, then his wife shall go out with him. If his master gives him a wife and she bears him sons or daughters... The wife and the children shall be her masters, and he shall go out alone. Right. So why does it appear women weren't released and men were? Well, because of what you just read. If the man entered a contract with a wife, that wife wasn't under the master's employ. But if the master had a woman working for him and that man married her while working there, that woman wasn't released just because the man's six years were up. She would have had her own contract to fulfill. Oh, so it's not saying women couldn't be released? No, to read that onto the text is called eisegesing a text. That's when you read your own ideas into the text when it's not what the author is communicating. Okay, but it's not saying she can leave. Right, but the focus isn't about the woman here. It's focused on the man's arrangement with this master in this particular hypothetical. Okay, so what about the next part? Verse 5 says, But if the slave plainly says, I love my master, my wife, and my children, I will not go out free. Then his master shall bring him to God, and he shall bring him to the door of the doorpost. And his master shall bore his ear with an awl, and he shall be his slave forever. Sure, so here we have, again, this man. He marries a woman who isn't freed just because they got married. So he could choose to go his own way alone, since his contract was fulfilled, and most likely wait until his wife's contract was fulfilled. Again, we're not given exactly how the contracts worked for women, and whether or not they were different between men and women. Mm -hmm. But the entire chapter goes through a lot of different scenarios with a man being used in the hypothetical. A lot of Bible commentators would agree it's safe to assume that they applied equally to both men and women. So like, for example, when verse 12 says, whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. Or verse 17, whoever curses his father or his mother shall be put to death. It's likely these apply to both men and women. Again, we can't know for sure either way, but it's more likely it did. Ah, okay. I never noticed that before. It does seem to just give generalizations with using a man as the example in the hypotheticals. Exactly. But back to your question, this all through the ear likely served as a visible marker that this man decided by his own will. Remember, it uses the phrase, love my master. So it sounds like these servants developed good relationships with their masters. Some Bible commentators describe being a servant in ancient Israel as being a member of the family. Okay. And in the ancient Near East, their social circumstances weren't like ours at all. Pulling yourself out of poverty was no easy task without government assistance programs like we're familiar with. Right. And imagine what it would be like if you were getting older and just didn't have the energy to make a life for yourself. This permanent choice of remaining with their master presented Israelites the same stable living situation that was offered to foreigners as we see in Leviticus 25. Make sure to check out my video series on that chapter because there's a lot to unpack there. Okay. But yeah, I mean, it's easy to read these verses with a negative outlook because we often don't consider the circumstances they were dealing with back then. What we need to be careful of is not inserting things that aren't there and being honest about what we simply aren't given information about. I think for that reason, it's worth being patient and gracious with a text that we have the honor of being able to study thousands of years later. 